Hi everybody, it's Mike Gesowich, co-founder of Teaching.com, Edutyping, and Typing.com. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Edutyping, where we field questions from our user audience from all around the globe, users of Typing.com, Edutyping, as well as uh, the keyboarding uh, world at large. So each week we start out with a uh, new typing tip, and um, this is the holiday season. And if you didn't join me last week, we addressed a number of different um, activities and lots of concerns from our uh, user audience that you know, during the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and other celebrations, this is definitely a high distraction time of year where students are very interested in many other things, sometimes other than keyboarding. And uh, you have to uh, compete with many uh, personalities like the turkey, as well as uh, Santa Claus, and um, no matter how hard you fight, Santa Claus um, is probably going to trump you at this time of year. So what I prepared for this week's tip is an activity that I think you'll love and your students are definitely going to love. So it's called Play Alphabet Soup. So this activity is super simple. What you'll need to play this activity is a timer. And the timer, you can use your phone or a regular kitchen timer. And you're going to want to set that somewhere between about three and five minutes. And then what you do is divide up your class and let your students know that you're going to be playing a game called Alphabet Soup. And you'll read a um, passage, not a passage, but a, a theme topic. And what the objective is, is your students will sit at their keyboard using any word processing software. Um, and uh, they'll begin to type with the first letter of the alphabet and go down to the letter Z, thinking of words that are relevant to the topic. So, for example, you may say something like, um, the fashion industry or uh, popular brand uh, brands of clothing. So the student would begin on your cue. You would say start and they would start by typing uh, a brand name that starts with the letter A, like Abercrombie and Fitch and then B, Banana Republic. And we'll go through the entire alphabet until the time expires. And then the winner is determined by uh, whoever uh, was able to uh, populate their letters A through Z with the most relevant words. And of course, what you need to consider is um, accuracy as well as speed will come into play here. Um, so you could award a prize for the first, second, and third place winner. And you could pick any topic. It could be uh, brand names in a supermarket, uh, names of streets, popular cities. Um, so it's a lot of fun and it does take that monotony out of the day-to-day -day grind of um, uh, each lesson and as well as uh, lets the student kind of experience a little bit of excitement. Another great topic to do is just holiday songs or holiday themes um, and that kind of gets them in the, in the, in the spirit and, it, and like I said last week if you didn't join me, the important thing around holiday season is to acknowledge the excitement and, and kind of um, engage with the students in that. So each week we field questions from our user audience, um, and this week I'm joined by my colleague John DeCarly, who will read our first question. So John, if you would please. All right, the first question comes from Lori in Glen Rock, Wyoming, who asks, when one of my fifth graders is practicing, he gets frustrated very easily when he makes a mistake. He always wants to go back and start over and or fix it before going on. I was encouraging him to just pause, think about the keys in his fingers, and go on. Don't worry about fixing the mistakes right now. That through this repetition, he is building muscle memory and that it will get better. Is that, is that correct advice? Well, first of all, uh, Lori, that is an actually a, a great question and you are doing all the right things for this particular student. Oftentimes we'll find that uh, no matter what age level, students get frustrated and the tendency to want to go back and start over is definitely a habit you want to break. And it sounds like you are definitely trying to do that. You're doing all the right things, positive reinforcement, letting him know that um, eventually he'll begin to get into a rhythm of muscle memory. But one of the things that I think might help uh, significantly with this particular student, as well as... Um, probably many of you uh, other teachers out there who experience similar frustrations from students is in, um, I'm assuming you're using edutyping, um, this feature is available. So by default, your students are allowed to um, start lessons over again. And what I would recommend is go into the teacher portal and change the setting to not, um, to basically disable that um, so that students aren't able to go back to the beginning of um, a lesson. And basically, it may be frustrating at first, 
But what we'll, what, what you'll start to see happen over time is that because the student doesn't have the option of going back and starting over, he'll be forced to, to continue on with the lesson. And over time, that um, habit will become good forming as far as his uh, keyboarding habits. And that's the strategy that I would recommend, although you are doing many of the right things, Laurie. So let's take our second question of the week, John. Okay, this one comes from Sharon in Sullivan, Missouri, who asks, how can I encourage students to position their hands on the home row and anchor those keys? I have used the keyboarding skins as well, and halfway through the semester, I had students stop using them. Last year, students used covers that also hid their hands, but only in a certain position. Sometimes they would look underneath or over the top of the covers. Students in my school are using Chromebooks, so I'm still looking for the ideal cover. Okay, well, Sharon, first of all, keyboarding skins, um, it's not something I recommend because, uh, and you said you stopped using them. It might be for this reason, it might not be, but for other users who are um, potentially using skins, skins basically are kind of a clear uh, acrylic plastic that lay over the keys. But what it does is it hides the letters, which is okay because it's forcing the students to uh, memorize the letters on the keyboard. Problem here is, is that, you know, our hands are used to touching the keys. So by kind of uh, camouflaging that, that feel, it really distracts from the uh, touch of um, what students need to, to, to feel. So for example, on the J and the K key are those little bumps and oftentimes they can't feel those. So they don't even realize that they're on the home row key. Um, but the other solution that I, that I would recommend is we actually manufacture a product called the No P Keyboard Cover. And um, this cover, is engineered to actually work really well with laptops. You said that your students were either looking under the cover or over the cover, but I have a laptop that's similar in size with me today, and it's um, basically about the same size of a Chromebook, which is what you say you use in the classroom. So if you take a look, it's a perfect size, and it's very difficult for students to look underneath, or especially on the top of it, because what they would need to do is actually move the laptop uh, back and forth, which is going to create real problems for them as far as um, staying focused and their hands anchored on the home row key. So, um, and if you uh, don't have the funds to purchase um, um, a commercial product like uh, the keyboard cover I just mentioned, uh, a great uh, idea is to take the top of, um, if, if you've seen the boxes that paper is shipped in, the top of the cardboard, if you cut out the sides, those make ideal uh, covers for um, laptop-based keyboards because they're very low uh, to, to the key, keyboard and it's difficult for students to look underneath. So I hope that advice helps. Um, good luck and thank you, Sharon, for your question. So we got time for one more question. So John, if you would read our final question of the week. Okay, this is from Brittany from Omaha, Nebraska, who asks, often my students have trouble telling the difference between some of the letters and numbers like lowercase l and number one, or capital O and zero. They don't understand why they are stuck or lose accuracy on a lesson. What do you suggest? Okay, Brittany, uh, by the way, I want to just uh, give a shout out to Omaha, Nebraska. They, they officially adopted our premium paid edition of EduTyping um, last year and rolled it out to their entire elementary uh, schools. So uh, some, somewhere in excess of uh, 25,000 students are now learning the keyboard as early as in first grade. So um, that, that's fantastic because those students are gonna be armed with a, with a skill that they're gonna use for life. Um, so to answer your question, Brittany, it's very difficult, even now, you know, experienced keyboarders like myself and, and lots of other teachers out there. Sometimes when I see uh, the number zero or a capital O, uh, it's difficult to distinguish between them. So not knowing your grade level, one of the things I would recommend is that prior to beginning any lesson, um, and, and my guess is, is that your students have reached the numeric keys already, um, but if they have not, then, then hopefully they're not, they're not gonna um, see the number one uh, or the number zero uh, within lessons. But what I would do is log in as a student, you can set yourself up as an account, and project your screen and let the students know what letters they're going to be learning that day or let's just kind of do a walkthrough of some of the lessons so they can actually begin to identify an L, a capital L, the number one and the number zero. So that will give them a visual which will reinforce um, or hopefully um, discourage them from 
uh, making errors throughout each lesson. But I will say that you know our alphabet and numeric system is the way it is, and uh, zeros do look like O's, and lowercase L's do look like ones. Um, I still struggle with it myself. So hopefully that little bit of advice will help you alleviate the problem just a little bit. So that's all we have time for, folks. But uh, I encourage you, if we didn't get to your questions this week uh, live on Facebook, then please join us next week. We will air live every Thursday at 4.15 Eastern uh, Standard Time. And uh, next Thursday, I'm really excited because I will be in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, at the Association of Career and Technical Education Conference. So I'll be airing live right from our um, booth inside of uh, Nashville. So hopefully you'll join us. But if uh, we didn't get time for your question, we do our best to get back to every single uh, user who submits something to us. And you can reach us at hashtag ask edutyping through either uh, Twitter, Instagram, or on Facebook. So until next week, I'll see everybody. And happy keyboarding, everybody. Take care.